Dr. Antara Abrunyoza, how do you see this? Um, how do you see, how do you characterize this model, ELI-NP, ifin hash hash nuclear medicine? I think you have a, a very advanced uh, research facility here, a reference in Europe and actually I think in the world, that can attract researchers from uh, all parts uh, to collaborate in what is... Uh Dr. Paul uh, Mikets, first of all I would like to uh, ask you to be so kind to tell us what is your impression about the ELI-NP and uh, about how this institute can, um, say, can, play, a, can play a role in uh, this uh, nuclear medicine field. I'm really impressed uh, with this uh, wonderful establishment, uh, <coughs> ally, and it is, gives a great opportunity to produce new isotopes, uh, isotopes which can, couldn't be produced before or their traditional methods. Mm -hmm which could uh, mostly, how to say, play a role for uh, treatment, uh, for therapy. What kind uh, of treatments you are thinking about? Uh, mostly, uh, how to say, the radioisotope therapy <coughs> is done for cancer patients, so different cancer, cancer treatment uh, can be taken into consideration. Uh, do you think it's better to have in the same place uh, all facilities, all needed facilities for uh, doing nu nuclear medicine? I mean, the production center, the diagnosis center? It, is, it has a lot of advantages. Uh, first of all, you know that you have all the people, all the players in the same place. It's much easier to cooperate than uh, cooperate from uh, far away. On the other hand, it also a point of view of uh, <coughs> Organiza uh, organization and uh, as well as administratively because if you are in the same place, the same organization doing this, then you can make us a local production, you know, that in-house production which has much uh, light uh, requirement than if you produce and uh, send away radio pharmaceuticals. Um, how is this working in uh, in Hungary? Because you uh, came here to present the Hungarian experience in this field. In Hungary, how to say we have uh, how to say pet centers which produces their own radio pharmaceuticals, and also they are sending away. Unfortunately, in Hungary we have a very strict rules in radio pharmaceutical and pharmaceutical production, so we cannot make uh, so far the in-house use. This will be <coughs> possible this from uh, this year or from next year, when the uh, when uh, the, law, uh, accept, the parliament accepted the new law, <coughs> allowing the in-house production. Mm -hmm. But so far we had to make it uh, only only by marketing authorization. But from now, if you have producing in-house, you can use it much lighter. Uh, conditions. Okay, this, uh, this law, um, um, how to say, allowing producing in-house uh, the, the materials you need, uh, um, implies new technologies, new procedures, or? No, it is no new, new procedures, you know, it makes a new radio pharmaceuticals, but uh, you use the same technology, same rules, uh, same safety uh, as uh, used before, but less administration, I would say, and uh, less uh, bureaucracy, which is really important, unfortunately. It is really important, and uh, it, it is important mainly for uh, patients who has to take the treatment. Yes, because you know that because of the bureaucracy, a lot of uh, radio pharmaceuticals wouldn't be available uh, for the patient. With this new law, we hope that we can have the up-to-date and the new, new pharmaceuticals, which, how to say, developed even other places, could be introduced much faster in the, into the patient care as uh, just now. Uh, you are, if you are not producing now, if you are not producing now in-house the radio pharmaceuticals, you are producing elsewhere in Hungary or you are importing? No, it is, it's very difficult to import this pharmaceuticals because it has a very, a very short half-life, a two-hour half-life. It is, you cannot, 
uh, import uh, from, from very far away. We are producing, we have in Hungary three centers which are producing uh, this radio uh, pharmaceuticals and uh, sending other hospitals. Even we are sending, how to say, to Romania, to Cluj, for example. We are Border sending. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Close so, yes. Okay. And in terms of costs, how expensive is to to do this? And do you think that uh, producing in-house will also, how to say, um, going the prices to go down? The price is going down because, how to say, since uh, we make, how to say, mass production, because in Hungary we are treating, how to we are doing for pet around 25,000 uh, patients. So it means it, may, it decreased the price already significantly. But if we remove the constraints of marketing authorization, it will be also, how to say, decrease the cost. And it will be, how to say, much more, uh, how to say, economical to mm -hmm. produce uh, this. Do you have some numbers, uh, how many patients are treated yearly using these kind of treatments? It, it's uh, it's diagnosis, not treatment. It's diagnosis, and uh, we have in Hungary at the mo uh, moment around 25,000 patients in uh, 10 pet centers. With uh, what kind of uh, diseases? Cancer mostly. Uh, uh, more, mostly cancer. It is how to say we have uh, unfortunately a very narrow indication list in Hungary, and this is uh, concentrating uh, mostly for cancer patient. It was uh, mainly because, you know, this technique was uh, so rare uh, and it was expensive. So, uh, the go how to say, the government and the health authorities had to say wh what they are paying for. And it was uh, the most pressing uh, reason. But no other, we hope that how to say, we can uh, enlarge this indication list and go to other uh, uh, fields like cardiac or neurology as well. The therapeutics using a, a, a framework that people call telenostics, you know. This is linked with the uh, modern concept of uh, personalized medicine that is to adapt the treatment for each patient, okay? And nuclear medicine allows you to do that. So you use a molecule to do the diagnosis and then use exactly the same molecule just with a small change in the nuclei. And, and do the treatment, okay? And this kind of approach that is very new and very innovative, you have here the full um, capacity to put it to work. So I really think the, the, the near future, the short term future is diagnosis and the clinic, but the medium term future here is therapeutic. And to extract the full potential of your capacity, I really think that you should follow that approach. Midterms means how many years? I'll say that three to five years installed uh, uh, clinical diagnosis center, and then in 10 years' time to have the full diagnostic approach in setup. All these needs a special infrastructure, IT infrastructure, other technologies. How do you do this in your center? Uh, well, uh, you need, of course, uh, an IT, uh, IT infrastructure. IT is more and more important nowadays, even in diagnosis. Um, traditionally, medicine has been quite resistant to the to the um, uh, to the help of uh, IT and artificial intelligence and models like that. But in recent years, this is changing. And. Uh, um, either in uh, helping the doctors do the diagnosis and also in archiving the images and linking all the information together, nowadays um, data uh, centers are absolutely essential to, to any nuclear medicine clinic. And, and uh, to be honest, I think that probably some of the biggest advances in the field in the future will be coming from, uh, from these data centers and uh, the use of artificial intelligence tools to help the doctors do the diagnosis. This is important for people to understand. This is not replacing the doctor by a computer. The final diagnosis and the final decision is always made by the doctor. The human doctor. Yes, the human doctor, not the Google doctor. <laughs> but, but it's really important that people understand that uh, uh, artificial intelligence systems, at the moment, okay, they can support the diagnosis, okay, and they can be very, very important tools. I'll give you an example. A typical person can see about 30 to 50 shades of gray, okay, but they can, a computer can see millions. 
So uh, if it's just a, a, a doctor looking at an image, he can see some contrast, he can see some shapes, but the computer helping him can see a lot more. So in fact, uh, with the help of the computers, the doctors can make a much better diagnosis. And of course, this means li linking with all the other exams of that type that were done before in the center. So that all is a collective information that computers can actually use using sophisticated artificial intelligence tools to help on the diagnosis. So I think this is a really very, very interesting field for the future. Do you already use this in your center? Do you already do this? Yes, we started to use this um, in, a, in a special uh, way, uh, something that is called pattern recognition. Okay, And uh, we're using computers to help the doctors doing diagnosis using precisely these pattern recognition uh, technologies. And this is something we'd like to expand more in the future and we really think will be central for, for this type of research. Pattern recognition of what? Of the, of the exams, of the PET scans. So oh, basically okay. when you look at an, an, an image, there is a limitation on what the, uh, what the doctor can see. Not just the shade of, shades of grey, it's also uh, small changes in patterns. Uh, something, something the, for example, like heterogeneity of the image, okay, that the computer can pick up. And these are important prognostic and diagnostic factors that can help in the diagnosis. So, for example, uh, an heterogeneous tumor has a different prognos prognosis from an homogeneous tumor. And for a naked eye, sometimes it's not easy to distinguish both, especially if the resolution of the scan is not very good. But the computer can give you a precise number, and that precise number can be used to improve diagnosis. Very, very interesting. Okay, in terms of costs, how this will uh, lower the, the costs? Uh, well, um, first of all, the diagnosis. Okay, if I, if I say that in 40% of the time that uh, the patient does a PET scan, the doctor changes the diagnosis, you can imagine the impact that has in the national health system. Basically, if the patient was what you call a false negative, that means the patient um, uh, has the disease but uh, the system didn't, the, was, wasn't detecting it, and then of course the patient will develop the disease and later on it will come on onto the health system with heavy costs because he has a more serious form of the disease and this will be a high cost. If we're talking about false positive, that means the system is saying that the patient has a, has a disease that he doesn't have, then maybe you're going to be treated and you spend a lot of money on the patient and he didn't have the disease, maybe you're going to a a uh, surgical procedure and in the end there was not a malignant tumor or something like that. So a precise diagnosis is very important and these nuclear technologies are the best way to diagnose a wide range of diseases. So really this is a critical component for any health system. So it looks like you're spending money now and this is true, you're spending some money now, but the amount of money you actually save on the national health system in the long run is huge and of course there is the big benefit of the patient of having the right diagnosis so there is no doubt it's a key component of any health system so i understand from this or i i i assume that for your um how to say for you it's not easy it's not hard to convince for uh, financing how is your center financed we uh, i i'm positive that you'll be able to convince your financing authorities and health authorities of the importance of this structure i, I I'm quite positive, okay, and that there are also international uh, studies that were performed. They actually analyzed the cost-benefit uh, equation on using this type of technology, and they're all very clear. This is the type of technology that saves money to national health systems in the long run. So I'm pretty sure that your uh, decision makers will be sensitive to that. Are yours sensitive? I mean, do you get easy? Uh, fi finance? Actually, yes. We, we, we have good experience on uh, getting finance and uh, um, we are quite happy. Also, not just at national level, but also at European level. You know, there, is, there are several initiatives within Europe to support the development of this type of structures. And so it's possible that you can go alone or in collaboration with other international centers and apply for this funding. Okay, la the last question. Do you see this model, ELINP, nuclear medicine, um, how to say, a model that could be replicated elsewhere? The um, model 
is very well designed and I think it's a great ecosystem for research and uh, yes, it could be replicated elsewhere. I wouldn't say create a facility like this because it's a very, very expensive facility everywhere, but the type of model you have here, yes, it could clearly be replicated.